um, with yourself, you know, the way you look, the way you are, the way you, the way you're going, um, the things around you, uh, that you put around you, that you surround yourself with, um, for me, that's happiness. Uh, I think when you're in a good state mentally and physically, which is the most important thing, as we can see now, um, that's happiness. And then, of course, playing playing football. Uh, football, for me, is the happiest, is when I'm the happiest. So when you're doing something you love, that, that that's uh, and working towards that, that's, I think that's that's happiness. When you're doing something you love, I like that. When you're doing something you love, that's happiness because I, I feel the same way. I feel like you can express yourself more. Uh, well, I can express myself more than I can in words with a football at my feet. And I'm sure I'm sure you are the exact same way. You say more mm-hmm. with every slide tackle, with every header, with every pass, with every dig, with everything you do. Um, that's I guess yeah, that's happiness. And everyone has a different definition of it. And that's true. And we have to kind of find the positives in our life every day and, and live proactively. Now you mentioned health. You said when yeah. you're healthy. It's, it's a component of being happy. Obviously, mm-hmm. as a footballer, you have to be as healthy as you can. You have people around you that can sort these kind of things out for you. Is there anything you do proactively? Uh, so obviously, you take care of nutrition because you know you have to, and the team helps you out with that. Is there anything you do proactively for outside of what football may require of you to maintain that sort of happiness? So, sorry, sorry. Repeat that. Repeat the question. You cut off so a little is, bit. So, is there anything you do? So. Obviously, you you eat you eat healthy, you eat good nutrition, so that you can yeah. live a proactive, good life. But outside, mm-hmm. for example, outside of the things that football requires me to do, I might once in a while I might draw just to try something new and to get, I know it's something good for me because I'm trying something new and I'm stepping out of my comfort zone. Is there anything yeah. different you possibly do that we don't know about? Yeah, I, um, I've kind of mentioned it a few times, a little bit. People ask like. It's become kind of my pregame routine, but also I think I do it on the side now is puzzles. I do puzzles, man. And for me, I love solving problems. I love, you know, solving, solving things. And puzzles has become a little hobby of mine. Um, more especially um, Sudoku puzzles. Um, it, yeah, honestly, that's that's my getaway. And uh, with a, like, maybe I make myself a coffee and... I just do a puzzle, man. Sometimes it's those a thousand piece puzzles or whatever, or mostly sometimes I do Sudoku puzzles that kind of it lets me refresh, you know, it lets me refresh from the day, recharge and, 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 and gets me back on track. Is, is Osorio good at puzzles? I'm great at puzzles. We I've become to, great at puzzles. We're going to test no, no, that I, one day. I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Sudoku puzzles have I've, I've become pretty good at them. I'm pretty confident in Sudoku puzzles. I do hard ones now, and I ch- now I even challenge myself. I try to get faster and faster. So, yeah, man, I just like you know playing with those numbers and and, and fixing them, and um, and then the puzzle. Actually, in the beginning of quarantine, I finished the the thousand piece puzzle uh, picture of uh, where was it Positano in in Italy. Um, it was a hard one. It took me about a little over a week, man. That was tough, but that's commitment. Yeah. No, man, it, it was nice. I mean, the beginning of quarantine, you know, you there were so much unknowns. You you had so much time. You didn't really know how to adapt to it. So the puzzles took a lot of my time. So it's a pre-game routine of yours. A puzzle, obviously, it's probably. I assume it's more like a simple one that you can finish or you start one and then you continue it further on. I also read somewhere that you eat pizza before a game. Is that true? <laughs> no, no, no. That was a... Uh, not, not anymore, no. Um, that was a joke one time um, when I was in my rookie year. <laughs> That's funny. So uh, one time in my rookie year, I had a game where... Um, <sighs> I, I forget what what the what happened, but I was not at home. It wasn't a regular day for me. For some reason, I had to be somewhere that morning, and for some reason, I couldn't go back home. I couldn't really go back home to get a pregame, my usual pregame meal. So I had to go straight to the stadium, and I was running out of time for some reason. I forget, and I forget why. 
why this would even happen and, 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 and come into distraction in, in, when I have, you know, work or a game. But uh, it did happen in my rookie year, and I had to get something quick. Um, and I got a pizza, man. I got a pizza. Um, and because it was, you know, something it loaded carbs. It was loaded carbs, and that was, I think, something quick that was going to help me. And it was, I think, probably the closest thing to me. So I got a pizza and I played that game. I ended up scoring that game. <laughs> so uh, I made a joke that, yeah, that was my, that's my pregame meal. But, but it was only one time. That's not bad, though. I mean, I, I saw that Josie Altador chose you as the fittest person on the team. If you want to have pizza, don't feel bad. We're little go have pizza. <laughs> it's not a big deal. <laughs> no, no, because, uh, you know, pizza is not the ideal uh you know we, we you know uh, luckily uh, being professional and, and being in this environment uh i've been i've been exposed to you know a lot of uh good education you know how to take care of the body nutritionists so i've learned a lot i've actually learned a lot and um in good nutrition pizza is it, it's not the it's not the ideal thing it does have carbs it's filled with carbs so it, it can help a little but it's kind of heavy, so. Um, but back then, I was twenty years old. That 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 stuff doesn't affect you. Whereas if I did it now, I I, I think I make it twenty minutes in the game and uh, ask for a soap. No, I hear you for sure. I feel like at twenty five, I'm twenty six now. So when twenty five hit, I went from like all this energy to just whew, more controlled. Um, I hope it's by the way, they're probably Italian people watching. I hope it's not a Hawaiian. I like Hawaiian, but I hope it's not a Hawaiian pizza. It's like a. No. No, 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 no. I'm not a Hawaiian pizza guy. <laughs> okay. We have it on record. Um, now, I asked this question to, I had Chris Manella on the other day as well, but I asked him this question and he gave me an interesting answer. So I want to see where you stand with this. Is there any way that you think you're being perceived either by someone else or by a group of people that doesn't really represent who you really are? Always, man. Always. Um, I think... Everybody, you know, I guess athletes, you know, we hate and, um, and at times you get to show your personality, but uh, some more than others. And me, I'm, I'm more of a, I'm actually more of a private guy. Uh, I like, I just like privacy. Uh, but, you know, there's always a, a side and, and not a different side, but, but another side of the people that, you know, can don't ever see and that's what our family see every day and really close friends so they know you know more they know you more in depth and because of that you know the the you know any person or fan will never see the the whole thing and and it's very easy to get the wrong perception especially if you don't show yourself a lot in the camera so for sure i'm perceived different by a lot of different people um Sometimes I can be perceived as very intense, um, which I am intense on in, on the field and at you know at my work, which is at football. But off the field, man, I'm I'm very laid back. I'm a normal person, like anyone. I'm very laid back. Uh, um, sometimes I get perceived. I see, I see or I hear. I'm perceived as a you know an arrogant person. I'm I'm the the furthest, in my opinion. And and I think the opinion of my peers and my family, the furthest from arrogant. So, you know, you 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 always be perce perceived by some people the wrong way, and and that that's something that, that again you can't you can't really. And some people choose to perceive you in a bad way as well, and that that's not that's just uncontrollable. So that's not something I can worry my, myself about. Mm, that's a good point. Um, yeah, like. I know with Chris, he was saying that, for example, the blonde hair, the tattoos, and I, you know, I have a tattoo as well, and so do you. And it, we are, even if, for example, you're Latin, I'm Latin, automatically you're going to be perceived in a, in a certain way. And, you know, I've known you for a long time, and I know who exactly who you are. I know you're professional on the field. I know you're professional off the field. I know exactly who you are. And we get, everyone gets defined as someone else. So it's good that, you know, we open up about it, and we, if there's ever a a problem with these things it's it's can come to light by speaking about it um, and you clarify these things right because often so many things can be said with athletes and you know they're called rumors when you're not an athlete so it, it happens to everyone and it's good that 
it's good that we can deal with it in healthy ways, especially with having a proper mindset, like you mentioned earlier. Now, this next question is quite difficult. I'm going to hopefully it doesn't hit you like a rock, but I want you to actually think about it. Now, you're a footballer and obviously you have so many other things going for you. But these things that you do, these things that you know you, you use this body inside, there's someone living within the body and the body you use, you use it to play soccer, you use it to make money, you use it to whatever you need to do. Who are you if you? If not, what defines you? But who are you? Who's that person that lives within Jonathan Osorio? Ooh, yeah. um, great question, man. Uh, who am I? I think I'm. Uh, I think I'm a normal person, man. Like anyone else, I'm a. I'm a guy. I think I'm a. I'm a kid with. I'm a kid at heart with a lot of ambition, man. A lot of passion for for what I do. Um, you know, I just, I try to always have fun, you know, I try to always be happy as much as I can, but, and, 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 but balance with serious at, at, at the right time. Um, I'm just, I think I'm, I'm very driven, very driven person uh, in whatever I choose to do, not only football, but whatever, anything I do when I do puzzles, you know, I want to do them the best I can. And that's it. I just try to be. I'm a guy, John Osorio, who tries to be the best version of himself every day and tries to get better. And I've I've changed too. I think I've come a long way where I used to, I think, by fault, compare myself to people. I will, I'm so competitive that I'm always comparing myself to people. Whereas now, you know, I, I, I enjoy just trying to be the best me. And I enjoy when other people try to be the best of them. And so... I try to be contagious in that sense. Now, I'm not worrying about myself. I'm worrying about people around me. And that's part of growing up, man. So uh, I think that's the, that's 